So next is going to be a, something that I've really been looking forward to. We're going to have two amazing ladies step on the stage in a moment. I'm going to introduce you to one, and then I'm going to leave the next introduction to um, Mrs. Affair. Chioma Affair, according to your bio, starts with you speaking about your role, but your number one role for me now is um, she is a board member, Wimby's Trustees. <laughs> and then we're going to your other profession. She is presently the Director of External Affairs and Social Performance at Sepla Energy. She has over 25 years of extensive experience across varied industries, including telco. She, prior to being with Sepla, she had served as the Group Head of Marketing and Communication at Access Bank. She has an MBA from the Imperial College Business School London and a Diploma in Marketing from the Institute of Direct Marketing London. Can we all put our hands together as we welcome Mrs. Chioma Affair to the stage? I'm going to hand you one again. Okay. So, should I stand and do this or sit and do this? I'll sit. I'll sit. Thank you, everyone, and good afternoon, evening. It's four o'clock. Um, so, it's... My pleasure to be here, and my job to be here. But uh, more importantly, um, I'd like to introduce the beautiful woman that I will be speaking to um, on the fireside chat for today around inspiring inclusion. And her name is Ngozi Ayegunam. Miss Ngozi Ayegunam is a lawyer by profession. You're going to give me some time. I have to praise you. Just wait a bit. <laughs> After, you know, some Otinku has to happen. Just wait. So, she's a lawyer by profession. She's a partner at Chief Rotimi Williams Chambers. And, as was said earlier, the first female non-executive director at Seven Up Bottling Company. She has multiple degrees. Um, she started out with English and then moved on to get her LLB. Um, she is, and I'm not going to cut into her story because she's going to talk about it, but I want to just say this, that she's blessed with four children. I think that's huge for her. And three of them are doctors and a very talented artist. So please join me with a round of applause to welcome Ngozi. Very much, everyone. Okay, so um, so I can call you Ngozi. Is that yes. fine? So Ngozi and I had a quick chat yesterday, just to familiarize ourselves a bit, right? And just to get comfortable on the stage together, because what I told her was, this is a conversation, and I'm hoping that from our conversation and our discussion, we'll take learning, and we will all be inspired to actively invest in women, and actually push forward in inspiring inclusion. So I'll start by saying something. Inclusion is not a trend. It's a movement. And it's a movement towards a more equitable future where all women have the opportunity to succeed and thrive. And that is a quote from Lupita Nyong'o, who is Kenyan and an Oscar winner and an altogether amazing young woman. So, bearing that in mind, I'm going to ask you, Ngozi, to please share with us your story and your journey so far to where you find yourself today. Okay. Um, sometimes people say I talk too much. So, given a microphone, I would say as much as I can. I, um, but I would really, I would plead... I would really, really plead that we just tone it down a bit. And that allows everyone to hear. Right? And I think my microphone is, is louder. So I'm going to give it to her. So just please give her a minute to just share. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Okay. So um, my journey so far. I got married really early at the age of 21. And um, 
You know how it is. You fall in love and all of that. So I got married really early at the age of 21. I graduated same year I got married. And um, by the time I had my daughter in 1984, and which was exactly a year after I got married, had my first daughter, I was already a graduate. I decided that, look, what I always wanted to be was a lawyer. So I went back. One year into that, I had another child, and I definitely couldn't cope. So I said, you know what, I'm going to take some time off, and I did. Two more children after. I said, okay, I still have it in view, it's going to happen. Exactly nine years after I left Unilag, where I was studying law, I went back. And when I got back, one embarrassing thing always happened. When they paced our results on the board, everybody knew mine because my own matriculation number was the oldest one there. And each time they say, oh, we know you passed. I said, yes, everybody knows I passed. Anyway, so right after that, I went straight into practice at uh, Chief Rotimi Williams Chambers. And knowing the kind of luck that I have, graduated 98, Law school should be in uh, Lagos, but guess what? They moved law school to Abuja. And I said, this is going to be very difficult. I have children at home. How am I going to cope? So I went to Abuja just to try and defer for another year. Luckily, I met a good friend of mine. I didn't know she was working there. And I said, oh, good. I'm going to defer for next year. She said, if you miss it now, chances are you won't do it again. I said, really? You said, yeah. So I went ahead and paid. Got back home, had to tell my husband and family, guess what? I'm off to Abuja. They said, but that's not the plan. I said, yes, I didn't know, but I'm not missing this second chance. So I did go. Finished, graduated. As soon as I came out, I went straight to Jifrotimi Williams Chambers. And I started working there. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Made great friends. We'll get to the friend part later. Make a lot of good friends. And uh, one thing I made sure I did, usually they wouldn't send lawyers outside of Lagos. Uh, outside of Lagos. Maybe it's not safe or whatever it was. But I went to places like Joss. I went to Benin. I went to Port Harcourt. I went to Abuja. I went to Ibadan several times and all of that. I did all that because I wanted to get a good feel of what the real practice was. And I did. Great friends I made. Fast forward 10 years later. Children all grown up. College and all of that. I said, okay, you know what? I think I need to do something else. A very, very, very good friend of mine just mentioned that, look, it looks like a Seven Up is hiring for uh, legal advisory and all of that. I said, "Oh, perfect." Now, all that time I was in F.R. Williams, I had this fantastic friend. She's uh, twelve years younger than I am, and we became fantastic friends. I actually call her my mentor. I actually call her my mentor. And when I say that, she says, ah, Mrs. G, how can? But I do. She showed up one day as usual. She said, I've got forms for us. We're going to do LLM. I said, for what? I said, I've done BA English. I've done uh, LLB. What am I doing? She said, no, we're going to do it. I said, you're on your own. She said, anyway, I've got two forms. Fill it out. Let's go and pay. I said, I'm not going. Cut a long story short, I did. Then we were picking courses that we're going to do. And she said, you know, if we pick this one, we're going to get this. I said, look, let's pick the simplest of things. My brain is not hot like that anymore. She said, eh, we're going to do this one. And when we graduate, we'll become members of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK because it was run by University of London. We did. 
We both passed. And I swore to her. I said, I'm not going to write any more exam. You're younger than me. You can do all that. I can't. Uh, I joined 7-Up. Another friend. Oh, we're Ixan. They're having a... I said, mm, I'm done. They said, no, let's do it. I said, are we going to do exams? They said, no. I said, fine, let's go. So I registered. We went for the training. It was uh, very intense. Lots of people uh, were there. Then at the end of it all, they said, oh, on uh, Monday, we're having exams. We said, no. We were told there were no exams. We thought they were joking. It was real. I found myself studying all over, all through the night. Luckily, again, I passed. I was like, yes. Many years later, I was in 7-Up, working, enjoying. And guess what? What gave me the confidence to apply for that job was because I had that LLM. And I also had the uh, chartered arbitration uh, certificate. So that gave me that confidence. If it was just law, all I would have known would be litigation and all of that. So that really helped me. 11 years uh, went very fast in 7-Up. Time for me to retire uh, two years ago. And um, I got a call from our chairman's uh, secretary. He says our chairman is around. He wants to see you. Each time he does that, I do a quick check. What's outstanding? Did something happen? Is anything left over and all that? I checked. I asked the other lawyers, is there anything? They said no. So I, I went there. I said, well, whatever it is, I can talk my way out of it. Ah, Ngozi, I sat down. How are you? I said, very well, thank you. My mind, I'm saying, get on with it. He said, oh, you know that uh, we had our meeting... And um, we decided to, we agreed that, you know, if you accept, we'd like you to join us on the board. He said, you know, just think about it. I said, no, yes. <laughs> no. So he had a good laugh. I was, I was totally shocked because the entire board were all men. However... However, during the COVID, 7-Up started producing too sure hand sanitizer. And one of the mandatory things that NAVDAC insists on is if you're producing anything that is not your drink, if you're producing anything medicinal or anything like that, you must have a pharmacist on the board. So, we do have another female, and in 2020, she came in uh, to 7-Up as the uh, director as well. I joined in uh, 2022. So, that was how uh, both of us were on the board. Anyway, that aside, when I went back to my office, I was like, hmm. Should I say anything? Because he said to me, we'll announce it officially, uh, the board meeting. So for about uh, two, three months, I didn't say anything. But inside, I was so happy. And I couldn't explain to anyone why I was so happy. Long story short, uh, it was announced and everything. Everybody was surprised because no female staff has ever uh, done that. Um, what even made me very, very surprised and shocked was that in 7UP, we have this um, forum for women. And um, once a year, we have uh, events. And Hansatu came to give us a talk. And that was the first time I met her. And while we were having the sessions and all of that it got to a point where she said look if you had to be anything here in seven up if you want to go high or anything what would you want to be and you know she was asking everybody people were saying all kinds of things and guess what i said i said i'd like to be a director 
And they looked at me like, look at this greedy God. Who told you you can be a director in seven? But it happened. It happened. I was surprised. But it happened. And um, after that, of course, I retired. And the law firm where I worked before, Chief Rotimi Williams Chambers, they asked if I'd like to come back. I said, yeah. I said, but I'm not going to do nine to five, five days a week. They said, no, 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 no. Just a couple of days a week. And uh, I said, I don't want to go to court. I don't want to go to court, kill myself, prepare my brief, and then the court doesn't sit. They said, no, no problem. You'll just do the corporate commercial, regulatory, and all of that. So I was very happy with that. So I went back and found out also that they made me a partner as well. So it was like a double whammy for me. I was extremely, extremely, extremely happy. And um, like I said, yes, I, uh, I have four children, uh, three girls and uh, one boy. The first three are medical doctors, School fees was something else. It was uh, I don't know how we did it, but somehow we did it. And the youngest one is uh, an extremely talented artist, but she passed on uh, in 2020. But I never ever leave her out when I count my children, and I never will. I never will. Extremely talented uh, artist. So here I am. And um, through Hansatu, after she met with us, that's how I got into uh, Wimby's. I haven't been active enough, and uh, I, I promise I'm going to be a lot more active. Okay, okay thank you. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, again, reference a quote. I, I think it's going to just help me sort of set the tone for what I'm going to ask. And another quote that was shared as part of Wimby's IWD was, um, true inclusion means creating space for everyone at the table, regardless of their backgrounds or beliefs. And I'm going to add, or their age, right? Let us strive to make room for all voices to be heard. And this is the female, first female president of Liberia, Ellen Johnson, who, who said this. And I'm going to go back to your story, right? And I'm going to ask a bit about that inspiration from different people in your life that allowed you push forward. So the first one is the friends. When you finished your BA, you went back and you did the LLB and you said, I'm done. I'm good, right? Um, but there was a friend who challenged you to go for the LLM. And it's again about inspiring, inspiring you to develop yourself. Can you just speak a bit to us about that? Um, and just around how that lesson has formed maybe a new way of you now inspiring other people and if there are any examples around that. Okay. When I went back, when I went back to Unilag to start reading law the very first time, my father was very, very excited because he was a judge. So you can imagine after one year when I left, he was extremely disappointed. And each time he'd see me, he wouldn't say anything, but his eyes were telling me a lot of things. When are you going back? It was that nine years after when he said to me, are you going to go back? I said, yes, now I'm ready. He was very happy. I went back. Each day he'd ask, how did this go? How did that go? Everything went very well. Unfortunately, he fell ill and... Um, I was still waiting for my results. Each time we'd speak to him on the phone, he would ask in a very frail voice, are your results out? I'd tell him no. He'll say, oh God. Finally, the day he called, 
And I said, yes, my results are out, and yes, I passed. You could hear him doing his best to raise his voice and sound really, I mean, that was just the icing on the cake for me. Now, when I started in F.R. Williams, and that my friend that I call my mentor, again, about 12 years younger than me, and she brought that form. And I said, you and who? I said, I'm done. I already have two degrees. You have only one. What made me listen to her was, there she is. She could have gone and done it on her own. Come back and say, I've got one up you. But she didn't. And she did everything, any argument I had against it, she had a response. In the end, not only did she win, but she gave me an unforgettable opportunity that I would never have found out because I wasn't going to find out I don't know how she found out, but she did. This afternoon, I was at home, and I got a call from her. What are you doing? I said, oh, you know, I'm going to X, Y, Z. Okay, maybe I'll come by and see you. I said, I don't want to be late. She said, don't worry. I said, okay. And she came. And I convinced her. I said, you will come here with me. She's sitting over there. Yejide Oshuke here. She's sitting right there. And I, I said to her, I was going to speak about you, but I was not going to mention your name. So I said, now that you're coming here with me, I would speak about you and I would mention your name. Please. Just this few minutes we've been here. She's lined up a few things that we're going to do. I said, eh, eh, I've done enough. However, there she is. Now, the, yeah. So, in that learning and in, in those experiences, how, and I, I think my question would really be around how have you either formed strategies or leveraged that to also promote or inspire somebody else, female, either and specifically at 7up, actually, I would say, because of how you've described the, the, the working environment. So while in 7up, one of the lawyers in the legal department, she came up to me, she said, Ma, you know, I'm thinking of, uh, I'm thinking of uh, you know, leaving. I said, why? She said, uh, one of her sons had some challenges and you know she needs to take him to school and all of that i said is that it she said yes so what time do you take him to school she told me what time do you need to pick him up she told me i said so who takes him to school in the morning she said she does i said okay this is what i'm going to do but i'll run it by you first you normally get to the office after you drop him. She said, yes. I said, okay, what we'll do is this. If you leave two hours before closing, is that fine? She said, it's perfect. There's no traffic. I'll be able to pick him up from school. So I said, okay, I'm going to go and speak to the MD and say to him that one of the lawyers, could she leave two hours before official closing because of the following reasons? He said, fine, that's okay. So I went back to her. I said, this is what I've done. Is it okay with you? She said, yes. So she was able to still take her son to school. And she was still also able to pick him up from school, spend the rest of the time. And what I then did without telling anybody else, we normally have uh, meetings every second Friday. And I said to her, call in so that the whole of that day, at least you're at home uh, with the children. It made me realize many things we take for granted. And she couldn't take, she didn't have 
that uh, uh, you know opportunity. And again, I remembered, if it were my mentor, I'm sure she'd do the same thing. Thank you so much. So, in talking about inspiring, inspiring inclusion, there are very practical things that we can do. There are very simple little things that we can do to allow the woman next to us, the woman we don't know, to just have her voice heard. And that's, that's what I'm hearing. To just support her a bit more so that her career or her objective doesn't get truncated. And it's a little thing to some people. For you, it was a conversation with your MD. And again, you are a woman at the leadership position. You could have that conversation, and then you had to make it work. Also, without losing sight of the objective of the team. So, you work in 7up, or you worked in 7up for 11 years, and then you get on a board that has all men, save for the other lady who is a pharmacist. So, basically, two ladies on the board. How do you navigate and address the challenges that are posed by that lack of diversity <laughs> at that level on the board. Again, understanding that, and I know the board is looking at issues for the whole organization and then providing advisory to management. So there are a lot more women, you know, that you do have oversight of. How do you, how do you navigate that? Um, first of all, I think the person who may have been either as shocked as I was or even more uh, was my MD. Because he, every time he saw me, he'd be like, so Ngozi, you're on the board. I said, yes. So now I, I, you know, I have to report things to you. I said, yes. I'd bump into him again along the corridor. So you're a director. After a while, I said to myself that, look, this guy seems like he can't, he just can't accept it. I have accepted it, period. Now, our relationship, we had a very good relationship. Our relationship remained. I spoke to him um, a few days ago, and first thing he said was, my director. And then I said to him, my yoga. He said, no, 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 I'm not. I said, yes, you are. Anyway, the, in 7 Up uh, itself, some of the staff who had been there long before me, I think I got the feeling that they felt like we have one of our own there. It felt like a lot of responsibility. Um, most of the uh, our board meetings, don't forget, just slightly out of uh, COVID and all of that, we did a lot of virtual, the meetings were virtual. And I felt happy that perhaps if there was anything, I would be able to at least speak up on their behalf should that ever happen. But till date, I speak to them, everything is fine, they're getting along uh, just well. Um, it just gives you a bit more um, voice to speak, unlike before where you'd be speaking just as an employee. So it gives you um, a, a bigger platform, a higher platform to be able to engage. And particularly when you have now retired, you no longer feel, I'm just an employee, but I'm this. You, you, you have a bit more muscle and power to talk. And they listen. So um, I had an interesting conversation with some friends yesterday. And, you know, basically talking about women and we're saying you hustle to build your career. You struggle to make manager. You have your babies. You do the school run. You cook. You do everything that you do. And for those who don't, they've got responsibilities when it comes to families, siblings, moms, dads. And you're running all that. And then you get to a certain stage, and I'm trying to get to C-suite. And you keep pushing because we want to be at the table. And when you get to the table, it's, oh, there's just one woman. That's you. So there's a struggle. I have to bring another woman. 
And that's suddenly your responsibility. What are you doing? What are you saying? And then the pressure is real. And then you get a second woman, right? And a third woman. And then again, more responsibilities around speaking up for your gender in the organization. It can be very daunting for younger women. It can be like, do I really want to? In fact, my friend yesterday said, I want to go home and look after my children and cook. Because quite frankly, it's enough. But <laughs> so it can be very daunting, right? And we're speaking about investing in her, accelerating progress, inspiring inclusion. So what would then be your advice to women at mid-level in their careers or in their business just starting out to still continue to push forward for leadership? be inspired, right, to go forward? And, and why should they even bother doing that? Um, if you remember, I mentioned I got married early. 21, I was married. So by the time I had all that time and the break, I was still relatively young. And uh, children were now in secondary school. Others were in uh, university. The pressure of doing school runs was off my back. The pressure of attending PTA meetings was off my back. The major responsibility I still had at that time was that the children were in Loyola Jesuit College in Abuja. My oldest was the pioneer set. And those days, you know, they didn't have many flights. Parents came together and we found a way. We'd hire a bus from Lagos and we'll all go up all that way, bring all the kids and bring them back. Now, remember that 7up is not a listed company. So it's a private company. And majority of the directors we have are all related somehow. The few that are Nigerians who are there are well-established people. You have someone like Chief Ojora, and by the way, his daughter is his own alternate, exactly. So he's always at the uh, board meetings. And because I only just joined them in uh, 2022, I am still in a process where I'm trying to uh, get the body language of the different ones. A number of them are still online. Very friendly, very jovial, very accommodating and all that. But there's nothing like that eye-to-eye -eye contact. That with my MD and my chairman, we have that because, you know, we've all been, uh, all that 11 years, we've had that uh, rapport. But they are also conscious of it. Because if they were not, they would have gotten a male uh, pharmacist, but they got a female one. And then subsequently, Ngozi becomes the next uh, person they also have. They actually support that. Uh, we, have, we used to call it the SBC Women's Forum. And they would set out like a whole week where we had activities and all that, everything fully sponsored. And this would be nationwide. We have nine plants nationwide, and it will happen simultaneously. There was nothing like men's uh, uh, forum or club or anything like that. So for me, that was actually um, very encouraging because it made them feel like, look, they've set us aside, they've let us have our group so that we can have all this talk. And luckily for us, the HR person is very supportive. And she ensures that, look, everything that needs to be done, we do it. So this conversation I'm having with you has given me also some ideas that perhaps there's a lot more that needs to be done. And I will try and force myself and be invited for the next time they're having the 7UP Women's Forum, just so... I try and get a feel of what the, 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 the temperature is and yeah. what is in the air. Thank you. Thank you. So you've already spoken about some of the things that 7UP is trying to do um, to sort of foster that inclusivity and, and finding a safe space for women to express themselves, to speak, um, and maybe 
take it further. And then you're saying you're going to take some lessons and moving forward. So I'm going to open up to have a few more questions, but I'd like for anyone in the audience who has a question, um, I'm very conscious of time to please put up your hand and the microphone will come to you and you can please introduce yourself and then ask a question or two. All right, we've got a lady here and a second here. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Poluke Akimolado. Uh, my question is about work-life balance because I'm a lawyer as well. And when I had four children, I have two, and I, I already know what I go through just to keep up with them and practice as well. Um, please, I would like you to elaborate on that. How did you balance it? Thank you. Okay. Um, just to give you a, a little bit of a hint. When my third child found out that I was going to law school in Buari, I received a letter, I don't know how, if it was by post or whatever from her. I opened it, what did she say? She was in primary six at the time. She said, mommy, guess what? Amongst the list of schools, secondary schools, she says, mommy, there's a school in Buari. So I'm going to uh, put that as my first choice so that I'll be with you. I said, oh my God. That weekend, I went back to Lagos because there were no phones to make calls. I said to her, by the time you finish your common entrance and you come here, mommy will be gone. Have you submitted the form? She said, no, daddy still has it. I said, you will not submit it. You're going to put Loyola Jesuit like your brother and your sister. Now, when you have children, you, you are constantly multitasking. You're... You, I, I'm not an extrovert. I didn't have, I had many friends, school friends and all that, but I wasn't at every party or every anything. And what I tried to do was over the weekends to spend as much time, in fact, spend all my time with them as much as possible. Um, it was, I would take them to school, but then my ex-husband, he would bring them back uh, after school. But most of the time, like on a Friday, for instance, instead of taking them back home, my parents lived uh, near enough to their school in Ikoi. So I'd say, you know what? Guess what? We're going to spend time with granny and grandpa. So they felt it was an outing. That was me just cheating. <laughs> so that whenever I get off work, I will go there and we would have all had um, a nice time together. It's not easy, but any minute you have, Spend it with them. Homework time, do the homeworks with them. The ones that you'll find difficult is the day they're having a school plays and you're in court at Ikeja. That one usually is uh, very difficult. So you prep them beforehand that someone got into trouble, you are trying to get them out. If not, they'll go to jail. That way, at least... Uh, <laughs> They'll tell their friends, mommy couldn't come. She's getting someone out of jail. You know? <laughs> so you, you just have to find a way to uh, uh, do that. But don't tell them, no, I'm not coming. Children always like you to explain. They always like you to explain. When I had my uh, fourth child, my, sec my third daughter was uh, in nursery school. No, she had gotten into primary one because she was now wearing a school uniform. She came to me and said, why is it when I bath the baby, I wrap her up and all that, that I don't do that for her? I said, because you're a big girl. She said, well, I want you to do the same. I said, no problem. When I finished, I you know, carried her same way. The following day, she said um, that I put uh, diapers for the baby. I said, yes. She said, can you also put a diaper for me? I realize there's a problem here. So I sat her down. I said, I could. But when you go to school, your friends would laugh at you. And we don't want them to laugh at you because if they know you're wearing diapers, they would say you don't know how to go to the toilet by yourself. She said, okay, that's true. I could have told her, rubbish, you're too big, you're too old. 
But they need that explanation. And even now, I tease her with it. And she's like, oh gosh. You know, but, uh, and all it was, was that she felt the baby was taking all the attention that she used to get. The minute I realized that, if I'm bathing the baby, I'll tell her, you come, scrub her back, do this, you know. So she now felt like we are doing this together, yes. So that's one of the things you have to. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Maladi Adeni. I'm the CEO of Wave. Um, I wanted to ask, what would you say are some of your biggest lessons learned or mindset shifts that you had to have or even challenges from moving from senior management to board? Because I feel like, you know, between that transition, it's, it's, it's not easy. There's a leap there. But what would you say are some of the biggest lessons that you learned in that, in that transition? Okay, first of all, um, the first time when I was in uh, Chief Rotomi Williams Chambers, we represented some companies, and uh, one of them, uh, what happened was we had different pra practice groups. So part of my own responsibility was to manage that company. So I acted as their own company secretary. I acted as their own company secretary. And because of that experience, by the time I joined the board, I sort of had a good idea that there'd be certain decisions taken and uh, it may be what would uh, be most favorable to the company generally. But the important thing was how to make it, how to pass it down onto them to realize that whatever decision we're taking, you may not see the uh, reasons, uh, the uh, results immediately, but going further down. So a lot of preemptive decisions would be taken. You may not feel it now, but it's just so, because look, if it doesn't work out, the board, the owners of the company also feel the pain. So they'd be shooting themselves in the foot to take selfish decisions or decisions that are not far reaching, it's not going to spread and everybody would actually um, get a feel for it. We may not see it immediately, but over the time, gradually the results uh, and the feel from it is uh, spread. Thank you. Do we have any question before I go to one more I have? Oh, yes, yes somebody. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening, ma'am. My name is Audrey Odogo. I lead the philanthropist activities at Microsoft. And Audrey Odogo, and I lead philanthropist activities at Microsoft for Nigeria. Okay, I'm trying to. <laughs> so my question is kind of, you know, a building up on what she asked because I had been posing that question in my mind is, Definitely, your journey has been one of grace. You know, you have people that have guided you, I would say, have watched you and have called you. And there are some people who may not have that opportunity to be called, but have to walk those baby steps, you know, to rise to where they need to be. And now that you are at that position, you know, or your platform, and should you be in the position to hold another woman up, and this is at the different levels at which had, you, had, you would require different levels of peak uh, points in your life. What would be those qualities you want to see in a woman to say, come? Okay, look at it. Okay, look at it this way. Um, like I said earlier, I was shocked when I got that news. I never expected it to be very honest with you. However, um, aside from 7-Up work, there were other works that we would do for the family. And in the course of that, I got to have interactions with the chairman directly. 
And what it made me uh, feel was that obviously I was doing something right. Perhaps what also confirmed it to me was when I did retire from 7up, the law firm where I worked before said to me, we would like you to come back. Now, one thing we should always do, if they say to you, once you get to three, you can stop. Those who want to do four, five, six, that's okay. Don't stop at three. Do four, five, six. Because it's those little extras that you do. Everybody knows, yes, yeah, six o'clock, you get up and go. But if you know you have something you want to finish, please stay and finish it. Because you staying to finish that thing and delivering it on time or even before time, it makes a difference. You could have the excuse that, look, um, I'll, I'll finish it up tomorrow. I mean, I only got it late uh, today. If you can stay and do it, stay and do it so that if you're having a conversation tomorrow, it's more of reviewing what you have already you know, prepared and uh, you have a, a better result. It makes a lot of difference. Um, sometime also, you'd say, okay, because you're a senior manager or whatever it is, if you get to the office late, nothing is going to happen. You're not setting a good example. Pretend you're just, just like everybody else. And leave yourself open. Whereby, if your colleagues or even people from other departments happen to need uh, advice or something, make time out for them. Don't develop that reputation that, ah, they don't talk to people if you are not a lawyer. Ah, they don't talk to people if you are not this. You should always put yourself in a position, not to your detriment, whereby you are at least able, as much as possible, just give that little bit outside what is expected of you. It works. It works. Thank you so much, Ngozi. Um, so I'm very, I've been reminded of time. I'm so sorry, darling, but I've been reminded of time and she's smiling. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to just take her question and then I'll wrap it up. Madam, that last question and I'll wrap it up. Excellent. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is um, Elizabeth Koko Maoku. I work with the government, so I will not be able to reveal my office for specific reasons. However, I would like to ask you a question, madam. How do you encourage women to be kind to one another? especially in the workplace. It's a very sensitive topic because I have seen, and, and, and most especially, I would like to mention, um, she's not here, Madam um, Akiola Daisy, AKD, that's why I call her, forgive me. She's one of the Wimby's um, um, board or something. She used to be my boss when I was working in a particular place, and she was wonderful. And she's one of the reasons I'm here today in Wimbies. She led by example. She was kind. However, I'm a single mom of two. But you see, in some environments, I've also had an opportunity or seen some cases where fellow women pull women down in their career. And it's terrible. And you begin to wonder, not, not even with me, but, you know, I see it happen around. And I'm like, but we are all women. We are meant to encourage each other to grow. Why do you want to pull the other person down to go up? I know it's not easy surviving in some of these environments, but however, how we need to teach each other to be kind to one another. Thank you, ma. Um, what you're saying is very true. And um, I always also had the same thing stuck in my head until I met until I heard, met, witnessed Wimbies. This is the first time you see a gathering of women, and this is going back now 20 years, Wimbies. And 
everyone is listening to the other person, cooperating with the other person, making friends. I, I, the ladies I met here, I didn't know them. We all introduced ourselves. We exchanged cards. We cracked jokes. But if it were elsewhere, maybe in one big fancy uh, party, you'd be checking out to see if she's dressed better than me. So, I think women do realize that in this whole room, we are in it together. Yes. Nobody is competing with anybody. We are looking to get a way how we can be up there, each and every single one of us. I'm not looking to outdo her or her or anybody else here. But people at work with you, they feel you are in competition with them. The solace you have is you have Wimbies, where somebody would mentor you, somebody would share with you how they got to where they are because they want you to get to that same place. We can't change human beings, but that is how women are. But don't ever treat them the way they treat you. Don't ever do that. One day they begin to feel guilty and one day they'll be like, ah, don't bother, she doesn't even respond. Don't uh, allow them make you change and be something else. And remember, you have Wimbies where everybody feels like a sister. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. So I'm going to wrap up. Um, and I'm, I'm just doing that by just saying a few things around what she said and what she shared with us. So one thing I would like us to remember is never say never. And that's one lesson she's taught us. Never say never. Personal development, continuous learning, being available for the opportunities is how you are inspired and how you inspire to get that person in on the table. Speaking up and speaking out for yourself and also for the next person, you know, around you. Doggedness. Someone asked the question around what do you look for and what would you search for in that next woman that you're saying, bring her forward, encourage her, mentor her. Doggedness, excellence, drive, setting the right example. Be open to collaborate. It's not about just holding on to your turf, but being open to collaborate and therefore open to the challenges that the workplace has and seeing how you can overcome those challenges together. Inspiring inclusion and investing in women is in the little things. It mustn't be the very big gestures. It mustn't be in the grand things. She had a call with the chairman. He had worked with her on a few things. He called her quietly. The MD is shocked, right? And it's just a little conversation and the next thing she's on the board and the MD is still shocked, right? But it is fine. So it's in the little things like her conversations with her friend who helped her and encouraged her and pushed her. It's in the little things like being kind that also helps that person feel comfortable enough to speak up. So thank you so much, Ngozi Ayegunam, for sharing with us today. One last thing. One, one last thing. Like I keep emphasizing, my mentor is 12 years younger than me. So don't look down on anybody. Don't at all. Don't pull rank or age or anything. Each time I say it, she's like, Haba. But that is the truth. Thank you so much. Please don't leave the stage. If I can please, first and foremost, welcome our two founders who are here with us, Mrs. Yuande Zakias and Mrs. Bola Adechola. Thank you very much, Ma, for being here. If we can please ask our founders and the Board of Trustees to please join our guest and the moderator on stage for a picture. We'd like our founders to also join us, please. Thank you.
Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you very, very much for that.